okay, let's look at a whole bunch of carbs under a microscope, see what it looks like. Chips, bread, whatever Cheetos are. Right here is what most of this starts with, a solitary kernel of grain, wheat in this case. Look at that, looks like a seed, doesn't it? Because it is a seed. Humans primarily eat seeds. This is a counter of seeds. Wheat, corn, rice, these are all the seeds of grass plants. That line down the middle of the wheat is called the crease. That's where it had previously stuck to the flower of the wheat plant. And then these little hairs over here called the brush this is the remnants of the stigma from the flowers. Try to cut it open through the crease there. And there you can see the fluffy white stuff inside kind of looks like mashed potatoes. That's the endosperm or the, the starch. That's the, the part that is tasty. The part that basically all of these things are made out of. Just the calorie part. That's the carbs, the endosperm. Down here in the corner, I believe we see the germ. That's like the actual embryo of the plant. Uh, that's where a lot of the real nutrition is. Historically, the reason that you milled out the germ and the bran uh, is that it contained fats and fats go rancid in time. So uh, milling that stuff off, just going straight down to the white fluffy parts there uh, makes your flour last longer. It's historically why we have white rice, white flour, all that kind of stuff. If that crease on the wheat kernel looked familiar, it's probably because you might have seen them on uh, rolled oats. Naturally, a grain of oat looks almost identical to a grain of wheat. It's just a little bit longer and pointier. Uh, the way they arrive at these flat little guys is they just uh, they pass them through a pair of metal rollers, makes them cook quicker. We look at a kernel of corn, maize, same basic deal. Lines, those striations running up against it. It's so striated, it's ripped this corn. Try cutting that in half. Yeah, you can see the germ really clearly there. The concentric layers of it there uh, look like leaves because that's what they are. That's called the plumule. It's the, the shoot that is ready to spring forward with a, a new corn plant to be fed by all of the energy, the starch that's in the endosperm there. So of course, if you grind the grains of wheat up into a powder, you get flour. This is whole wheat flour. Whole wheat meaning that they have not removed all of the bran and germ. It's not just endosperm, although you can see that the endosperm is still the majority of the bulk in there, all those little white flakes. Uh, that's just starch endosperm, but the big kind of chunks of brown stuff that's going to be the bran coat and a little bits of germ. Look at that, a little speck of green. I wonder if that was a piece of the straw that got in there. I have some wheat growing in the backyard. You want to see it? Yep, that's wheat. And if you harvest the seeds and grind them down into a powder, you get this. This is whole wheat bread, right? Look at the crust first. And look at that. It just looks like a web, like a spider's web. Uh, and I think that what we're seeing there is the the gluten structure, that is those gluey proteins in wheat. Look past the crust a little bit there, and then, wow, look at that. It looks like some kind of H.R. Giger thing, right? It looks like a egg sac, a network of egg sacs. Looking in the sort of flesh of the bread there, you can see all those little brown specks, little shards of, uh, of wheat bran and germ. It's that giant thing. Oh, that must be a seed. I think this bread has some like whole rando seeds in it. But remember, it's all seeds. Look at it from the side. Wow, it's just a network of caverns where gas and steam and stuff built up as it was baking. And of course, if you mill off the bran and germ and everything and you only make bread from the endosperm, you get white bread, wonder bread, the whitest of breads. Look at the crust first again. Doesn't look that different, right? I mean, because ultimately, the crust is brown because of the bake, because of the, the browning reactions that happen at very high heat that you only get on the exterior of the bread. Turn around, look on the inside. Look at the little brown specks. I suppose that is a little bit of wheat bran. Like they're not able to mill it all out. There's still a little bit left. It's funny how when you think about it, at least in American English, we would commonly call this white bread and this wheat bread, which is funny because they're both wheat bread, right? They're both made with wheat. This is whole wheat bread. We simply truncate that phrase by taking out the uh, whole part and just saying it's wheat bread. Um, I suppose like a more logical truncation or shortening of that would have been to call it whole bread. And this, I don't know, not whole bread, it's kind of more accurate to think of it that way. And for contrast, here's like a loaf of, you know, real bread, like bread from a bakery, not from a, a factory. Uh, you can see that fine white flour around the top. Look on the bottom, the base of the bread. That looks geological, doesn't it? Uh, that, of course, is the cornmeal. Uh, cornmeal used in baking basically is 
a lubricant just to keep it from sticking to the peel that they used to transfer the, the bread into the oven. That really looks like Mars. Tear it open. Fluffy starch just looks like mashed potatoes. By way of comparison, let's look at some mashed potatoes. Basically the same stuff. I mean, a potato is not technically a seed. It's still the thing that the new plant grows up out of, and therefore it has energy stores in the form of starch. And in fact, I made this mash from my latest box of Hello Fresh, the sponsor of this video, and America's number one meal kit. We got the low calorie plan this week because, you know, February. Everything in here was super tasty, and honestly, just having the boxes show up at the house kind of nudges us to make real food more often instead of just eating quick junk. And that's probably better for us, regardless of which particular meal plan we are on, whether it's vegetarian or family friendly, whatever. The meals only take like half an hour to cook. There's no going to the grocery store. There's no buying huge boxes of stuff that you might not use all of. Everything is pre-portioned, which makes a HelloFresh meal like this a lot less wasteful. There's actually a University of Michigan study that found that the carbon footprint of a meal like this is actually lower than a comparable one that you cooked from groceries. And the recipes are consistently terrific and very satisfying. You want to try it, do us both a favor and go to HelloFresh.com. Use code 10 Adam Ragusea to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. It's 10 free meals with my code 10 Adam Ragusea at HelloFresh.com. Thank you, HelloFresh. So got a couple different kinds of pasta here. She's just like a pretty standard linguine dried. And then here, imported from Italy, linguine cut with a bronze dye, meaning extruded through uh, a dye made of bronze rather than stainless steel or uh, coated with Teflon I've heard about. So here's the bronze dye linguine, and then here's the kind of standard linguine. Look at how much smoother that is. In theory, this is superior, the bronze dye one, because it creates a more of a textured surface that'll hold more sauce on the noodle. Um, that's something that we should test another day. A little letter pasta for soup. Just curious to see what this is. Very chuffed up surface. You wonder if that's just from them uh, grinding against each other in the bag. A for Adam. Look at one with ridges on it. This orichetti. These are bronze cut as well. Those ridges, they look like arches up close. Side of a church or something. The Italians would like that. Very different kind of pasta. Thai style rice noodles. Whoa. Looks like bugs or snakes or something. And again, little specks of bran from the rice grain still left in there. So brown rice, rice that it's had its outer hull removed, but the bran coat is still reasonably intact. But remember, of course, that that bran coat has fat in it. The fat will go rancid in time. So historically, people just grind this down to grind away the outer layers, get rid of them, and then you have white rice. You can definitely tell the difference, but yeah, you can still see little bits of brown bran left that didn't get milled off. And from the side, white rice. Looks like a larva, doesn't it? And see that part in the end that's kind of scooped out a little bit of each one? That's where the, the germ was. Popped out of there, broken out through milling. Now what is this? Is this some kind of grain of rice? I mean, it says rice on the box. Nah, not really. Uh, rice Krispies are not grains of rice that have been like toasted and fluffed up. It's like a dough that they make out of ground up rice flour and sugar and stuff. The uh, modern breakfast cereal industry began with these Kellogg's Corn Flakes in the 19th century in Michigan, uh, in the United States. A guy named John Kellogg had a sanitarium or a place where he would heal people, uh, ostensibly. Uh, and he created this food for them, basically by like cooking grains in water the way you normally would, uh, but then drying them and then pressing them through rollers, uh, just like those rolled oats to make these little flakes. Ultimately, it was uh, John Kellogg's brother, Will, who uh, saw the commercial potential for these. Like, hey, we should put sugar in these. And that caused a, a rift between the two brothers that, uh, Never healed. Let's look at something really profane like Fruit Loops. It's just easy to forget with all of these highly processed breakfast cereals that they're all just grains, seeds, remember, seed pastes. They're all seed pastes. In this case, it's mostly corns with, you know, sugar and flavorings and colorings and stuff in them. Not that I'm complaining, I love this stuff. I mean, something like Frosted Mini Wheats is slightly less like processed. The wheat has not been like turned into a paste or a flour or a dough and then shaped, it's the actual like wheat berries have been passed through a, a thing that kind of looks like a paper shredder. That looks gnarly up close, look at that. 
Just a forest of starch. Look at the sugar side. Oh, sweet sugar. Wow, you can almost see the crystals on the frosting. The one other one I really want to see is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Certainly my childhood favorite. Oh, those big crystals of sugar. You can see them. Little square crystals of sugar. That's why it's good. Of course, they have those cereals in uh, things like, you know, Chex Mix. Hey, it's, it's a wholesome breakfast, right? It's got cereal in it. Look at it. It's like being in carb prison. I think that's salt. See those little kind of white crystals? That's got to be the salt, right? There's other things in here, of course. There's like the little brown things that kind of look like Melba toast. I don't know what that is. But yeah, look at the salt crystals in there. It's like the Fortress of Solitude. And the last interesting thing to look at in here is pretzels. There's little bits of pretzel. So the way that they get pretzels to look like they do um, is by taking the dough and then boiling it in a highly alkaline solution. Basically pre-cooks the starch a little bit before it then bakes and so you get this very dark brown smooth layer. I'm curious to see if these other snack foods will have similar salt crystal shapes. Lay's classic potato chips. I don't see any salt in there. Teeny tiny crystals it must be. I wonder if I backlight the chip. One thing you can see is the, is the bubbles, the steam inside the potato. Oh, wow, look at that. It's like lava. Try something different, try the Pringles. Potato chips not actually made out of slices of potato, but rather potato flour, potato starch basically that has been just made into a dough uh, and then shaped <laughs> into these perfect little ellipses or whatever that's called in three dimensions, I don't know. And there, if we look at it from the side, yeah, those are salt crystals, right? Little teeny ones. All right, here's something that's definitely gonna be visible. Doritos, right? Just a corn tortilla chip with uh, all kinds of seasoning on it. There we go, it looks like Christmas. Okay, now I see something. I believe that is MSG, monosodium glutamate, which of course is why Doritos taste so tasty. Because if you look at pure MSG, which uh, in the United States is sold under this brand name Accent, you can buy it at the store, just MSG crystals are always, whenever I've seen them, little bars like that. Like that. All right, now, the grand finale, Cheetos. Just another corn dough that has been fried and topped with a cheese powder. When I was little, I ate a bunch of these and then ejected them. Never been able to eat them since. And I guess my takeaway there is like, it kind of looks like everything else on this counter, right? It looks like the bread, it looks like everything because all of these things are just seed pastes that have been cooked. Go enjoy your seed paste and uh, I guess I have plenty to enjoy myself.